This is going to be part two of 2 Corinthians 4, and we're going to look at the flesh versus the spirit. First off, we see excellent versus earthly. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the old man, your flesh, is of this world. It is temporal. You can see it. It is an earthen vessel. But look at 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Your flesh can be seen. It's temporal. But the spirit that's inside you, you can't see it. It's eternal. You have something excellent inside you. That is that treasure in the earthen vessel. And that is Christ in you. Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your earthen vessel may bear the scars of a wicked life that you lived. It may have scars all over it from hard living. It may have tattoos of naked women and dragons and the number 666. But if you're saved, God lives in that earthen vessel. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? What's on the outside may not look good. It's weak, it's annoying, it feels pain, it gets tired, but you have something excellent inside you. You have the light in you, if you're saved. That is the treasure in earthen vessels. John 8, 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now back to 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure and earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the power is from God, not of me and you. God lets us have these earthen vessels to keep us relying on Him while we're here because they're weak. And, I mean, we need Him. The real power is within you. It's not of your flesh. The inward man is excellent. It's sealed into the day of redemption. It's light. And since the power is of God and not of us... This is why we preach Jesus Christ and not ourselves. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So next, the inward man is sitting in heavenly places. The old man is suffering on earth. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you're saved, then in Christ... You're already sitting in heaven, spiritually speaking. However, physically, you're down here on this earth, feeling the effects of the world. And here is a good contrast between the inner man and the old man. In verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. So Paul is troubled on every side. 2 Corinthians 1.8 said he was pressed out of measure above strength, yet his inner man wasn't distressed you may be troubled on every side maybe you work with christian haters and your husband is lost and your kids act like the devil but if you think eternally then you won't be distressed paul was perplexed baffled or confused but the inner man wasn't in despair many times you're perplexed you're thinking i wonder why the lord let that great christian die but let that devil possessed man live you have to think eternally 2 Corinthians 4, 9, he says, Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Paul was getting put in prison. Thrice beaten with rods. Suffered shipwreck. You name it. But that inward man wasn't forsaken. You may go through a lot of suffering in this life and feel abandoned, but the comfort is that God is always with you and you're going to heaven when you die. All this world can do is kill the body. Paul was cast down. The same way the Lord cast down his enemies is the same way the, the world tries to cast down Christians. If you're going through trouble on every side and it seems like your flesh has no rest, you're being cast down. 2 Corinthians 7, 5, and 6, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. 
If other Bible believers quit talking to you because of a minor disagreement, you're being cast down. You may be an outcast to people, but God is still with you. My favorite preachers are mostly outcasts. A lot of preachers will not fellowship with Danny Castle, and they tell him they can't fellowship with him, but they hope, but they hope the Lord blesses him. And he's like, so God can have something to do with me and bless me, but you can't have something to do with me? What does that say about those men? Do they think they're better than and more holy than God himself? They're saying God can have something to do with them, but they're so good that they can't. Another preacher I like is David Hoffman, one of my favorite Bible teachers, and he's pretty much an outcast among many Baptists. He's on the fifth edition of the Common Man's Reference Bible. He pastors two churches at once and was indirectly responsible for another popular reference Bible available today. And he rarely ever gets asked to preach away from his church. He's a little bit of an outcast. Ruckman is an outcast and one of my favorite teachers, yet every crowd of Baptists almost hates Ruckman. But God still uses men who were outcasts, and Paul was an outcast, but not a castaway. He was troubled on every side, but always got back up. You're cast down. Your flesh has no rest. That's the flesh, the old man. But when you live for the Lord, you're crucifying the flesh. And when you walk for the inward man, it wears out the outward man. That's why Ecclesiastes says, Much study is a weariness to the flesh. And when you get up early in the morning just to spend time between you and the Lord, your flesh says, Sleep five more minutes. When you're in Paul's shoes and people was beating you and spitting on you, your flesh has no rest, but inside that inner man can't be destroyed, and it's at complete peace. It's like any time you speak up for the Lord, the flesh don't want to, but then that new man gets in the driver's seat, and you're at complete peace. Like my pastor, Donnie Dalton says when he starts preaching, I'm not afraid of anything when I get like this, because he puts the flesh down, and he's letting the Holy Spirit be in charge. Your new man needs to be in the driver's seat, uh, driving the hearse with the old man nailed in a coffin because you have to reckon him dead. You have to die daily. When your flesh says, let's do this or this or that or do something bad, say no to the flesh. Say, I'm not living for a dead corpse. Now, verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So Paul was simply following Jesus Christ's example. Jesus Christ walked this earth caring about everyone else but himself and left a pattern of suffering that Paul followed to the point that he was always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. As it says in Galatians 6, 7, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ suffered and Paul followed his example now, verse 11, 2 Corinthians 4, 11, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Someone who doesn't want to suffer or will go out of their way not to be persecuted to the point of ruining their testimony is not making the life of Jesus manifest in their mortal flesh. That is, they aren't making him open to the world. The more you show your faith and be Christ-like, the more he will be open to the world. Christ is in me, the new man, and I need to let him show to the sinful world. When I let the old man take control, then Jesus isn't shown and doesn't get glory. 2 Corinthians 4.12 So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Paul goes through everything so that he can help others. Death works in him so that he can help the Corinthians. He travels around preaching the gospel to see others saved. He suffers being called a heretic because he's trying to edify the saints by preaching the truth. Second Corinthians 4.13 We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So Paul suffered in this earth because of his beliefs. He believed in God, the Bible. He believed in loving thy neighbor as thyself. He believed in preaching against sin. People hate Christians because Christians believe some things and speak those things. A man that believes things has convictions, and people do not like convictions. Next, the, the, uh, the new man, the inner man, is raised up. The old man, the flesh, is reckoned dead. 2 Corinthians 4.14 Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. My inner man has already been raised up. 
as I said, it's sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My body is going to be raised up just as sure as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 13. Just as sure as Christ rose from the dead, you'll rise. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 says, And if Christ be not risen, then is pre our preaching vain, your faith is also vain. If Jesus Christ didn't raise up, then all the preaching, teaching, Bible reading, and praying you're doing was all a waste of time. But 1 Corinthians 15, 15 says, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. So if Jesus didn't get up, then we're all liars. And if Jesus didn't, didn't get up, then we don't get up. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 17, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. If he didn't raise up from the dead, then our sins are still applied to our record. 1 Corinthians 15, 8 through 19, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. My new man is raised up. The inner man, the old man is reckoned dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Paul's crucifying the flesh daily. And he says in Colossians 3, 15, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness and ordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. Say no to the flesh. Don't live for a dead man. Live for a living man. 2 Corinthians 4.14 Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus so raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Paul is ready to be presented in heaven with his convert. His mind is on somebody other than himself and that's how you get happy. That's how you walk in the light. You die to self. Because look what Paul says in the next verse. In verse 15, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Next, and last, the new man renews daily, the flesh returns to dust. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. This is because the outward man is temporal, the inner man is eternal. This is why we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord. Ourselves in the sense of our flesh is temporal, but Jesus Christ is eternal. And this is why we think about the souls of others, because their souls are eternal. The outward man is getting worse and worse. The inward man gets better and better. It is renewed day by day. Every morning you need to wake up wanting to renew the new man by fellowshipping with the Lord. Well, here's one more thing. The new man has lasting rewards, but the old man has a lot of affliction. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For our lot affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. Notice that Paul calls the things he's going through light afflictions. Think about it like this. You may go through trouble down here, but what is that short time of trouble compared to an eternity of pleasure? The eternal things far outweigh the trouble on this earth. Think about when you were little and you had to get a shot. The pain of that shot lasts a very small moment compared the, to the entirety of your life. Just like the trouble you go through in this life amounts to a very small vapor compared to your time in eternity. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Everything you see is going to be burned up. It's temporal. But Jesus Christ, you can't see him. He's in you. He's eternal. You can't see the re rewards of your labor yet. All you can see is you. But the rewards and, and eternal life, heaven is forever.